Yo, what's up everyone? Mike here, hanging out on the mushroom farm. Great video for you guys. So we're gonna go in the grow room in just a little bit here. I put some new blocks in here, just cut them open. So uh, let's just take a look at this. I wanna talk to you guys about what I got going on, kind of what mushrooms we're gonna have coming up. I wanna talk about how the grow room is set up, all that good stuff. So here's some of the blocks I just put in here. So I literally just put these in here last night. Uh, these are lion's mane blocks. I wanted to do like a full rack of lion's mane in here, right? So because I've got a few other racks in here and there's my humidifier over there, I'm gonna talk about the intakes, the humidifier, we're gonna talk about the exhaust, and kind of just like what I'm doing, right? Because got a full rack, like I said, right over here. Back over here, I just got a couple random blocks. And really what I'm doing is I'm just still testing stuff, okay? So I just built this grow room. This is like a pretty much a brand new grow room. I've ran a few different mushrooms through here, a few different blocks here and there on some of these other shelves. I've done some lion's mane, I've got some coral tooth, black pearl king, king trumpets, oyster mushrooms. So we've done a couple different mushrooms in here. I have not done a full rack though. So I'm doing the full rack. I like to just test everything especially before like the farmer's market season comes up and before I start working with restaurants or anything like that because like I said I'm brand new here to Colorado so I'm just making sure this new grow room is dialed in right for all the environmental conditions and that I never fall behind on production okay I always want things to be like banging freaking perfect you know what I mean I always want to have lots of mushrooms uh, blasting off and popping off in here so we got to make sure we got this room dialed in now what I'm doing is I'm just making sure my airflow is right. So that's exhaust. We're going to talk about that. These are my intakes over here, okay? So this is to get my air exchange right. So that's a major component. We're going to talk about the air exchange. We're also going to talk about the humidity, okay? So that's my humidifier right there. And I actually have two ultrasonic misters. You can see them in that thing. So this thing, and as you can see, the, the floor is kind of wet over there. This thing puts off some mist, boy. Like... And I'll tell you, Colorado, here in the mountains, it is dry. We are in a low humidity just environment in general. So I'm kind of testing things out right here, all right? I, the cir there's a circular one, and then there's these are House of Hydro, and then I have that rectangular one, the big, like, XL one. This room would most likely be okay on just that big XL one, but... I've noticed if I have just that circular one in there alone, the humidity honestly doesn't like to keep up to where I want it. So that's why I stuck that other misting unit in there. Everything's been doing good. All of the grow videos and stuff that I've kind of shown you so far with this grow room on the channel, I've had it set up just like that, okay? Now, how I'm controlling that humidifier is with a humidistat, okay? This is actually, you can kind of see it maybe, I'll wait till the fog dies down, but I, I have my sensor up, just kind of dangling from the ceiling over here by the exhaust fan, okay? So anyway, I have a humidistat that's kind of controlling this thing, and we're just making sure that we are getting the humidity dialed in. The lights, the lighting, not a big deal, okay? The, as long as it's, you have enough light to read a book comfortably, that's enough light to grow mushrooms, really, in a grow room like this. But... The airflow and the humidity are pretty much the two things that anyone will battle or things that you have to really get kind of dialed in. Now, I've got these blocks that I spaced out really more so just to get make sure our humidity is right. I'm just making sure I don't have any like spots on these mushrooms that are too wet, you know, where they don't like it. Some mushrooms like it wet, okay? So for the mushrooms that do like it wet, we can go ahead and we'll put them close to the humidifier. But the ones that don't do well, I tend to kind of put those in drier areas of the room. So you should always use those things to your advantage. Like all grow rooms tend to have kind of like areas that are a little drier, areas that are a little more moist. So do what you can, work with your environment there. Even things like air exchange. So here dealing with the environment just in the Rocky Mountains, like I said, we're kind of dry. We're cooler than what I was in the Midwest too. There's mushrooms that just do better in cooler environments, environments maybe that don't need as much air exchange, like for instance, king trumpets. I've been growing king trumpets, and the king trumpets that I've been growing here have been doing great. 
So I'm really probably going to lean in the King Trumpet a lot this year, too. Lion's Mane will do good in a room just like this, too. My Lion's Mane that I've been doing, I've been doing really, really good, too. So I imagine Lion's Mane is going to be super popular for me here. But I always kind of use, like, the environment that I can to my advantage. Don't try to battle it too much. Definitely try to, when you're trying to select the mushrooms that you want to put in your grow rooms, and even, like, when I make my selections, I kind of think about what my environment's like, what the season's going to be like, and that's how I pick my mushrooms. Sometimes I do rotate things out from uh, season to season. Like, for instance, I don't plan on growing pink oyster here in the winter. It's just a little cold for pink oyster here in the winter. But So instead of doing that, I can do things like king trumpet, maitake. You know, I can kind of like lean into something that might do a little bit better in a, maybe a slightly cooler temperature with maybe a little um, less air exchange. So that's what I do, okay? I definitely use everything that I can to my advantage. And like I said, I've just kind of got these blocks spaced throughout the room right now just for testing purposes because it would really suck if you would like fill up a rack of, of mushroom blocks and all of a sudden you just realize it's too, you got, it's too wet over there or something or you don't have enough airflow and then I have to go modify and stuff. I'd rather like slowly make adjustments and not have to like worry about doing it just like that. So that's why I do so many tests. I always run a bunch of tests on stuff before I completely fill a room up. Just that way you don't have to work yourself to death if you do have a problem and uh, you actually have some time to think about it and make the proper fix. You're not just doing like a band-aid fix or something like that too. So that's a few things like I got going on right now. And right now these blocks, I'm gonna be side fruiting these lion's mane. And that's really just because of how I've got this room set up here. So this room, I've got some viewing windows. So that's my incubation. You can actually see my incubation right there. There's a grow room also on the other side too there. So I've got two grow rooms on this farm, but I got some viewing windows here and I'm planning on just doing like a wall of mushrooms basically. Mainly because it's like easy for me to work with then and it's also like great for pictures. It's gonna be great for video. We're gonna get some like awesome shots of just mushrooms being a big wall in there. I think the wall always looks cooler than top fruiting. I will do some top fruits in here though. I plan on doing maybe the top fruits maybe on the top shelf, you know? Um, but I don't know, I'll kind of figure out exactly how I wanna set those up. But I'm gonna be doing like my maitake top fruited, black pearl king, um, king trumpet, pleurotus syringi. Those will be top fruited. I will say if I ever do get to a point where I need to like cram more racks, like a, this is a, I think this is like an 18 inch wide rack. This isn't the two foot rack, but you can get like a two foot wide rack and then you can actually top fruit blocks on the two foot wide rack, uh, wide racks then, and you can get more mushrooms. If I need to get bigger racks in here one day, just because if my sales are just getting extreme and I need to grow more mushrooms, that will be the plan. The first plan, if I ever need to like increase production, will be to get like slightly wider racks. And then I probably will convert to top fruiting. And you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, but we'll see. For right now though, I'm doing side fruiting for pretty much everything, like I said, except those species that I mentioned, just because I like the looks of it. And uh, just the way I, the mushrooms grow in general. I just like the way they do grow when I side fruit for the species that I grow for the most part. You guys got any questions for me or anything like that about like what I got going on in here or what I'm planning? Uh, just drop it down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to address it. I'll do some more videos like on the exhaust system specifically and on the humidification system specifically. But basically what I have is I have two fresh air pipes coming in and then I have that exhaust going out, okay? And they're gonna be different. You need to have them set up different for all different farms. So it's always gonna be kind of like, as far as like how big should those blowers be, it's really gonna be like, it depends. But I'll just say really for my room that I have here, this room is 15 foot long by six foot wide. And then I got an eight inch exhaust fan here. And the two intakes, they're, they're powered by six, they're six inch ducts. And one of them is like a shorter pipe, so I only have one blower, but the other pipe is a little bit longer, so I actually have two blowers on it. And sometimes it really depends how you, how you have everything set up, you know, um, but true fresh air, I like to do true fresh air on one a lot of times, actually coming from outside, um, or like a geothermal pipe or something like that. And then the other one, I typically will go from 
inside my building, which is essentially like a preconditioning area. So I'm just basically drawing off the air inside my building on that other one. And then the two airs kind of blend together. I will say I'm going to experiment a little bit though, because I may even, the one that is true fresh air in the winter time, when it's cold like it is now, and if I'm, if I'm in full production at that point next winter, I will try to draw air off the building here that is preconditioned, and I'll just see how the CO2 does. Because with things like King Oyster, Maitake, the lion's mane, it may not even affect it much. So we'll see how that goes. It'll depend how packed this room is, and like I said, just how things respond. But that's a few things that I'm kind of playing with right now with the humidity and the airflow. But I just kind of want to share you, share with you guys like a quick little update about like what I got going on in here, kind of how I like to test things out before I like completely fill the whole room up, you know what I mean? Um, so if you have any questions for me or anything you want to say, just drop it down below in the comment section for it for me. Um, if you uh, found this video helpful and informative, just drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one, and I will catch you guys on the next one.